happy Friday, or as my kids like to say, it's fun Friday. <laughs> I hope everyone is doing good. I am just checking the chat and making sure that everything is going okay. Let me know if you can hear me. So let me, I got everything on, right? Right? Okay. Um, let's see. Let's give some shout outs to Khan and Carol and Brenda, who are my moderators. Thank you so much for being here and helping out. I really, really appreciate y'all. And hi to everyone who's joined us tonight. I see Star and Marissa and Kathy and Delia. Thank y'all for being here. And I saw we have uh, someone new, C. Lombard, that saw uh, me on Sewing Machines Plus on Thursday. Thank you so much for coming over. We are excited that you're here. Let's see. Hi, Norma. Let's see. I see. Uh, Karen, Michelle, Amy, Patricia, Francis. How are y'all doing? So, I'm so glad y'all are here. I'm excited about tonight. We have a really cute project to do. But let me tell y'all about a few things before we get started. So, let's see. Where do I want to start? Last week was Hoop Fest, and it was so much fun. If you were not able to watch it, it's all on YouTube, so you can watch replays. It's also on um, Sewing Machines Plus um, is Facebook page. So. Hoop Fest was a virtual embroidery event. So um, because of the pandemic, you know, 2020 was very special <laughs> and we did a lot of virtual things, right? So Blaine over at Sewing Machines Plus had started having a virtual show and virtual events. And so he had Quilt Fest in March, which was awesome. And then last week we had Hoop Fest, which was all focused on embroidery. And it was a great week. They showcased all kinds of amazing machines, software, um, accessories, hoops for your machines, different tools to help you. So if you missed any of that, you can go to Sewing Machines Plus's YouTube page and you can see each day and it gives you a breakdown of what all went on that day because it was like an eight hour day. <laughs> so it was long. I only got to catch a few segments myself, but I'm going back and watching the replays of things that I wanted to check out. And one of them I still haven't checked out yet is the John Deere digitizing. I need to watch that one. But um, I had the opportunity to teach there last Thursday um, and I taught an applique class and it was a lot of fun. And we went from, you know, the basics of how applique works and, went and showed a bunch of examples, a bunch of different ways um, stitching is done on applique. So it was a lot of fun. So thank y'all for those that watched. And then I kind of had a surprise uh, thing yesterday <laughs> where Blaine called me on Tuesday and was like, hey, you want to be on the show again? I'm like, sure. So uh, I did the show yesterday with Blaine, and it was um, just a short 30-minute, uh, one-hour show, and we went all over the machine that I'll be using in tonight's um, tutorial. So it's the NQ3600D. Um, and it's an awesome machine and I'm going to show you it in action tonight for the project and not only are we going to see the embroidery side of the machine but it's also it's a combo sewing machine as well and we have the last step of our design is to sew the bunting together so we'll go through all of that in a little while let's see what else I wanted to tell y'all <laughs> um oh if you are not already subscribed to my email newsletter, I do send out a newsletter every Thursday giving you a little heads up on what's going on that week. So like yesterday I sent out the email saying, hey, I'm going to be on, so <laughs> on the show again. Um, and then I also gave the details of tonight's Sip and Stitch. So if you'd like to be in the know of what's going on with Sip and Stitch and other things, events that I'm doing or uh, projects, you can sign up for my newsletter and I have a link for that down in the description below. And then the other thing I wanted to tell you is so I have a, um, a membership group. Um, it's called the CF Fans and CF is for Creative Fabric. I partnered with them to have a membership group and in that group we have our own private sip and stitch um, once every month just for the CF Fan members and I make and give an embroidery design 
each month. And so I wanted to tell all my CF fans that we are going to have our Sip and Stitch next week on Thursday. I posted a poll on the page and it looks like Thursday's the winner. So I will be doing that and I wanted to grab it and I forgot to show y'all, but I'm, we're gonna do an in the hoop snap tab um, for that project and I'm gonna upload that free embroidery design for y'all probably next week on Monday. I'll try to do that. <laughs> so that's going to be the July design and we'll do a sip and stitch on it. So that's going to be a lot of fun. If you would like to take part in, uh, part in it, you can sign up for my CF fans membership group and I have a link for that down below. So let's see, let me check the chat. Uh, I wanted to go over a couple things. So um, I have my wonderful moderators and they are there helping to answer any questions. However, if there are any questions that you have throughout the project that I have not answered, or they have not answered, I'll get to those at the end tonight. And I wanted to tell you, we're gonna, this might be a little bit quicker project than usual because I have somewhere to go. <laughs> I'm very excited. Life is slowly coming back to normal and there is a festival um, in my hometown and it's got music and food and I'm very excited and my husband is there without me and I told him I will meet them there when I'm done. So. Um, hopefully tonight you you get everything out of it but we will move a little bit quickly <laughs> so all right so I'm gonna go ahead and get started and tell you what we're doing tonight I don't even think I introduced myself at the beginning hi I'm Carly Bell <laughs> and welcome to sip and stitch <laughs> for those of you that are new here I know we have a few people from uh, sewing machines plus so this is our um, bi-weekly tutorial sip and stitch and bring whatever your beverage of choice. All right, tonight's project is the, it's, a, okay, so Carol, my friend, um, introduced me to a new company, a new website that sells embroidery designs, and it's called Sweet Pea Embroidery Designs, and they have beautiful stuff, and it's, it's much more involved and intricate than stuff that I'm used to. So it's not just like going to buy a design that I'm going to put on a, on a shirt or a blanket or whatever. These are like projects and I love them and I want to do all of them, but I'm trying to keep myself contained. So I um, picked this 4th of July project for us since we have Independence Day is going to be next Sunday. Um, and there was two things I really liked, but this one seemed a lot more doable for sip and stitch. The other one is going to be much more involved, but I'm going to show you all my progress because I do still want to make it. But tonight's project is from Sweet Pea Designs and it is a 4th of July bunting. I never call this bunting though. I always call this a banner. So what you see here is three triangles, right? And then this string holding them together and you see my clips because we have not sewn it. I haven't sewn it together yet. We're going to do that tonight. Um, so each of these triangles, there's two different types. You see ones with a star and ones, uh, they have two with stars and then one has stripes. So each of these um, triangles is one in the hoop project. So I already made three of these. These were, these were three different hoopings. So we're gonna make the fourth one tonight that's gonna go right here and that's gonna be the completion of my little banner, but you can make as many as you want. So I just wanted to make a little one to hang here in my craft room and I'm using, this is bias tape that is holding it together while the clips are holding it, but that's bias tape on top and we can, we're going to talk about that when we get to the end of the project, but that is what we're making. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using, so it comes in two different sizes. You can either get the five by seven or the six by 10. I went ahead and just made the five by seven um, to see how I liked it first, but I might make a six by 10 version for like my fireplace downstairs. But for the craft room, I did the smaller one. Um, the machine I'm using tonight can't, does have a six by 10 hoop, but I'm going with the five by seven. So let's see, let me show you my stuff. All right, so what we have is the five by seven hoop I have some cutaway stabilizer. Then these are the pieces you need. Now, one thing that's awesome about this design is that it comes with PDF instructions and those instructions are very clear. So it was not confusing at all going through it um, this past week, making my three 
my three triangles, y'all see here. Um, it was it was very simple to go through and, and figure out from the instructions how to go about doing this. But I know I am a visual learner, so I'm hoping that this video helps you feel more comfortable with these types of in the hoop projects. So the one paper I did print out is all of the sizes of material that you need for the project. So there's a star bunting block and a striped bunting block. And this, these are the sizes you wanna cut out for a five by seven hoop, and these are the sizes you wanna cut out for the six by 10 hoop. So I'm gonna do the stripe, out of the two um, options, I'm, we're gonna make this one tonight. This one I find was a little bit like this would be helpful to have the visual instructions. This one I find was pretty straightforward and it's very much a typical applique. You lay down the fabric, it's, it does it, you trim it, you, it's gonna do the placement for the star, lay down the fabric, trim it, it does the finishing stitch, it's gonna do a placement stitch for this, lay down the fabric, it tacks it, you trim it, and do that. So this one was more straightforward than this one. So this is the one we are gonna make tonight. And I went ahead and followed these and I cut all the pieces out. So the one we're gonna to make tonight is gonna to look almost like this, but we're gonna go opposites. We're gonna do the gingham for the top and bottom and then the, the stars for the middle. And then I'm using the same, I don't know, you can't tell so much from the, um, from this, but this white material has stars on it. I think it's hard to tell. And it's hard, also hard to tell which side is the right side. <laughs> but I have all of my material pre-cut and ready to go. So you can follow your guide on if you wanna have all that cut and ready. And the cool thing is, is that if you're gonna be making like 10 of these, you know, five stripes and five stars, you know, go and do this all at the same time. And then those, those each hoopings are gonna fly by. It doesn't really take long at all. The other piece of materials we need is, this is the first material, this is quilt batting. So I just went to Joann's and got some, uh, a package of quilt batting. I know nothing about quilt batting, so I just bought a small package. Um, if you are a quilter, you probably have plenty of this at home. <laughs> but I, I cut a square that's gonna just be the size of my hoop. And then this is the material that's gonna be the back of your triangle. So each one of these triangles, you see it's a finished back. So you're not, because my material is white and thin, you can see through it. But if you wanted to pick a blue, you know, you wouldn't see through that. But typically you don't see the back of these banners, so I don't think it's a big deal. I had plenty of white material, so that's what I'm using for the back. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is hoop the stabilizer. And that's one thing I love about in the hoop projects. All I have to do is hoop stabilizer. I don't have to hoop anything. I don't have to even float anything. And y'all see my, my pretty band-aid with, with diamonds on it. <laughs> I cut my finger with this uh, rotary blade earlier when I was cutting these pieces of fabric. I got myself pretty good. Okay, but it's not bleeding anymore, so I'm fine. All right, so we have the fabric hooped, and now we're gonna go over to the machine and pop it on. So, let me move this. All right, let me get my stuff out of the way, so. I know this particular camera does not like when I move in front of it because it messes up the focus. <laughs> so here is the NQ3600D. This is an embroidery and sewing combo machine. Um, it has up to a six by 10 hoop, but you can also do five by seven, four by four, and two by three. Um, and if you are familiar with the NQ 1600. This is pretty much the same thing. It has all the same embroidery features, but it is also a sewing machine. And coming from a person that is not, I've not used a really nice sewing machine before. I have, I have a, a basic 
sewing machine this is amazing as a sewing machine <laughs> and I'll show you some of those features when we're ready to sew up our bias tape for the bun the bunting when we're done so I already have my design loaded and I know this I tried to turn the brightness down on the screen but it wouldn't let me but I have the design already loaded so with this design you do not need software um, you can just download it unzip it copy it to your USB stick and plug it in you'll get you know two files you'll get the stripe file which we're going to do tonight and the star file which is this one okay um, and then it comes in the two different sizes and then all the different formats. So I'm using PES since this is a brother machine. So I have that already loaded and ready to go. So now I'm just going to slide the hoop on. Also, the reason I like this one a lot is that there's only, th and there's no thread changes. I'm going to do everything on this project in blue and I already have the blue thread loaded. So every, you're not going to see any of the stitching of these pieces together that's all going to be hidden but this quilting of the blue stars on top is your final stitch and that's you know you pick whatever color you want for that and so I chose blue so that is on now there is the first step is actually not a placement stitch you want to go ahead and lay down your quilt batting you don't need any spray adhesive you just cut you a piece that is as big as your hoop and lay that down and then you can start stitching. So no placement stitch. We're already, we already know that this triangle is going to be the size of the hoop. So I'm gonna hit embroidery. So now it's showing me all my different steps. And so the first step is the outline of the triangle. I'm gonna lower my presser foot and stitch. ordered this machine awesome you're gonna love it okay so it is done and all it is is a simple triangle as you can see here so I'm gonna switch you over now to my my board so now we're gonna treat this just like applique and we are going to where's my I got my handy dandy tool kit that um Terry made me. Y'all see how cute it is? <laughs> I always keep that on my craft table and let me turn it so that my applique scissors are here. So we are going to treat this just like an applique and we're going to trim out the triangle. I probably could have made this batting a little bit smaller, but it's fine. So these are my favorite applique scissors. They're like, they work like tweezers. And I love that. Because I find it's, it's like, it's hard to, to hold like regular scissors sideways. So these are just really comfortable. All right, so I'm just trimming this. is done. So now we can, come on thread, <laughs> uh, we're going to put this back on the machine and we'll do the next step. Okay, so I'm just going to slide this on and now the next step is actually a placement stitch. So now we're going to go ahead and let it stitch on top and we're just going to lower the presser foot 
and go. And this is going to tell me the placement for that first tri that first piece at the bottom of the triangle. All right, so that is done. And I got all my pieces here. So my first piece is going to be the gingham. So with this project, I am not putting heat and bond on the back. Um, I, I don't think there is a need to. I will iron these when they're finished just to get them flat, but I don't think we need to worry about having the fabric you know, coming away from the batting. I don't, I don't think that's an issue. This is not something that's going to really get washed probably. Um, unless it gets dirty somehow. Um, but I don't think we need to worry about heat and bond um, for this project. So I just have my pieces cut with no heat and bond. So I'm going to put this right on top. Let me show y'all. Sorry if I make your car sick. Can you see that square? So we're just going to lay this piece right on top of the square like that. And then I'll press start again. Trying not to make you car sick. <laughs> okay, and since this is a pattern, I'm gonna make sure my gingham is not like crooked and it's going straight up and down and hit the presser foot and go. All right, Chantel said she recently got the NQ 1600 and she loves the slide. Um, attachment for the hoop. I know. I love it too. Coming from a PE770 or like PE800 and you have to snap the hoops on with those two pegs and sometimes if you don't have it right your hoop can pop up on accident while you're in the middle of stitching and ruin your project. Ask me how I know this. Um, this is a super nice feature of this machine. So this one and the NQ1600. Also the Baby Lock Flourish 2 all the same embroidery features, those three machines. Okay, so it's stitched the um, placement of the gingham. So you see that there? Now, we do not have to trim all of this. All we're gonna do is trim right above this top line here, okay? So I'm gonna take my applique scissors and try and do this well, I've got this upright. <laughs> Let's see if I can. Okay, so we are just trimming that top section, and that's it, okay? So, the next step is going to be to take, so this is called Fabric A, on that, on that PDF paper that tells you what, um, which size is to cut out, right? Next, this stripe is gonna be called fabric B. And so this white stars fabric is my fabric B. Now, I think this is right side up. <laughs> we wanna put it right, now I second guessing myself, it's really hard to tell. Okay, but depending on what fabric you're using, you want to put it right side down on top of this fabric A with having just like a quarter or a half inch above where this, this stitch is, okay? And that's how we wanna put it back on the machine and it's just gonna stitch one line right here again. It's gonna copy this line and stitch right on top of it. So right side down and it's gonna stitch that line and then we're gonna pull it up like this and it's gonna help us make our next stripe. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do now. Is just stitching that straight line across the top. Okay, so let me show you how that looks. 
All right, so we just have that straight line now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up like that. I'm going to kind of finger press this to kind of create a crease. And then it is going to do another rectangle placement stitch. So you don't really need to, if, if you're worried about your fabric not pulling as tight as what you would want, you can put like a piece of masking tape right here at the top. I didn't find it was necessary. Just finger press it and push and let it stitch that next um, rectangle to make this particular stripe, okay? little blue thread poking up here. Well, it doesn't matter because it's going to get cut off anyway. All right, so I'm just finger pressing it and pushing it up. And now I'm going to hit start and go. All right. So now we're going to repeat this, what, three more times? We have three more stripes. So this is what we're left with. Focus. Okay. So now you see it did, it just did the, the top part of the triangle, uh, rectangle. So we're going to trim this again. So I'm going to take my scissors. just trim the top part of this. Now we're going to take fabric C. All right, this one's a little more obvious. I know this is right side up and that is the wrong side. So we're going to put the right side down. I'm going to put it a, a smidge above this blue line like this. And now we're going to stitch another line across this way. good. All right. All right. Who's talking about lasagna? Now I'm hungry. <laughs> and brownies for the fan for the uh when we get together yes carol please <laughs> okay so we did that line now we're going to do the same thing we're going to lift this up we're going to finger press it and then it's going to stitch you know the the top and sides of that rectangle again okay Pressing my fabric along that seam and then hit start and go. is done. See? Can we see? You gonna focus? Yep. <laughs> so you see that blue line again? Now we're gonna trim right above this one. See this guys this is simple. It looks intimidating but it really is simple. Once you once you see it in action you're like oh I can do that. So now we trim that and now we will take A, B, C, D. I'm gonna do white again. Why did it need to, that made it way too long. Um, I'm gonna put it right side down and slightly above 
this line here. This is how much Carol loves me. She is at her cabin in the mountains and her internet is out, like completely out. It's been out for like weeks. And she drove to, I think, a local library and is sitting in their parking lot using their Wi-Fi just so she could be here with us tonight. How sweet is she? How sweet. So last time we're gonna trim that. I'm gonna put it down for this one because I made I made this strip way too wide. It called for like nine inches wide. I didn't even think about that. The hoops only five. So I'm just trimming this real quick. No, I didn't need to trim this one. I don't know why I'm doing this. It's when it gets to the top, I need to trim it. I didn't need to trim that. I just need to finger press. So I'm doing this, but it didn't hurt to trim it. Okay, doing that, going back on, doing my top of my rectangle. Then we'll trim. Okay, finger press. Let's see. So press that down, go and start. That is what I call dedication. That is right, B Cobbler. <laughs> All right, Kathy says, Anger duckbill scissors are wonderful. I have heard great things about those, but I've never, I've never had a pair. I've never tried them. I've only ever had these. <laughs> I love them so much, I was like, I don't need to try any other ones. But I have heard great things about it. All right. Yes, I do have these scissors linked. All the supplies that I use are linked down below. So we have the link for the design I'm using. I found the quilt batting that I'm using on Amazon. That's linked. What else? Cutaway stabilizer. Um, all the material I got from Joanne. Um, bias tape. So I actually ordered a giant roll of bias tape bias tape that I linked for y'all down below. Um, see, there's my focus. Okay, there's my tri my rectangle. I'm gonna trim across the top. Um, what did I do? I bought the giant roll of bias tape that I linked down below, and it hasn't come in yet. I think I ordered, I ordered it like on Monday or Tuesday, so I probably got my hopes up too high thinking it would come before we started today. Um, so I improvised and I took this white fabric that I had already and I cut a long strip of it and that's what I made my bias tape with. And I'll tell you all about that um, when we get to it. So last strip, so A, B, C, D, E at the top. And that's gonna be my red gingham again. And so I'm gonna lay it face down and just have it a smidge above this line. save this piece of fabric for another piece 
of applique because that can definitely be used for another piece of applique in another project. <laughs> okay, so I have the line, last one that we're going to do like this. We're going to flip it up and press it and it's going to do the last rectangle. fun for me because I know I struggled when I started with machine embroidery and uh, it took me a long time to get a handle on it and so if I could help someone not have to go through that that makes me very happy <laughs> but also um, it, I love the community that we have with this now and that it is getting me out of my comfort zone because as, bef as before last year I've never done it in the hoop project and now that's all I want to do because someone asked about it um, in the Facebook group and on YouTube on how to do these types of things I was like I've never done it before so I tried it out and fell in love with it and now we do sip and stitches on in the hoops all the time <laughs> so now we have our stripes so what is next I Next is the quilting. So now it's gonna do the blue star quilting all over the triangle. Okay, so that's the next step. We don't have to trim this one up here. We're gonna get to that when it's all put together. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it back in. I have my blue thread on there. And it's gonna do the blue star quilting. And what's so fun about this is you can you can make each triangle different. You can you you know use all kinds of different fabrics. I had actually had intentions of trying to make my own fabric for this project, but I went to Joann's and I saw all their beautiful fabric. Let me show you. I was like, I don't need to sublimate any. I found so many that I loved. So this is the white star focus. That I'm using in my stripes now. I know it's hard to tell. Then they have this firework and I also got it in like a glitter. So they're not the same but similar. Firework pattern with stars. This one has some glitter to it. This one has no glitter but like more stars. Then the red that we're using, the red gingham, and then I love this one too. It's a blue and red star. So they had so many cute, and they had a, a bunch more. So I was like, I, I just want all of these. So now our blue quilting is done. So the next step is now you wanna take what's gonna be the back of your flag. So I'm just using a white piece of fabric. Okay, you can use whatever you want. You can use felt, you can use a dark piece of fabric, whatever you have. I mean, really the back of the, the bunting should not really be that visible, um, but just use whatever you have on hand and that you can cut, you know, large squares out of. So I have my large piece of white and now it's going to stitch just the V and it's gonna do it in two separate steps. So once it's just gonna be a running stitch and then the machine will stop and then it's gonna do a, a, like a triple bean just to really reinforce it and make sure that it's on there good so that when you turn it inside out that the seams don't rip that it's really sewn down good so we're going to do that all right so my white backing is on there and i'm going to hit start Brenda, thank you, but well, you know you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> I should be paying you for helping me all the time. Let's see. Thank you. All right. So 
the society says my youngest daughter loves glitter, but I do not like any form of it in my sewing room. When it's on fabric, be sure you clean your bobbin area very well after finishing your product. Very, very good suggestion to make. I know when I, a long time ago, I used, let's see, I don't even know where it is. I had some glitter, it's almost like embroidery vinyl, but it had like loose, it didn't have that clear coating on top. Like the glitter would fake, flake off as it was sewing and it, I had to go bring my machine to get serviced after because it, it was full of it down there. Okay, so that is that one triangle and it was just a running stitch. So now it's gonna do the reinforcing stitch. It's kind of like a triple bean stitch. All right. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> there are these, these women on Instagram that I've been following for years and I love them and they crack me up. They're an organization company. They're called The, the Home Edit. And the two, the women's name is Clea and Joanna, and they have the best Instagram stories. I love them. And they talk about glitter. And they talk about that, you know, the kids coming home with projects from school covered in glitter. And they despise, as much as, you know, they love sparkly things, they do not want glitter in their house. <laughs> and when they talk about someone having glitter in their house, like, you, you might as well just throw it away and get a new one. Like, when talking about their house, <laughs> which we know they're not serious, but it cracks me up. Yes, society says she's used that loose glitter vinyl before. Never again. Same here, honey. I found good embroidery vinyl, machine embroidery, uh, machine, uh, not machine, marine glitter vinyl. That is much, much better for sewing and embroidering. And that's it, guys. That's all the steps of embroidery. So we are going to take that off. And now we're going to go back to the craft table and I'm going to show you the next step. Okay, so let me clean up my space. Don't think I need that right now. Don't need that. This is all trash. Okay, so next we're gonna need our rotary cutter and don't cut yourself like me. And ruler, I'm on my cutting mat. I'm gonna loosen up my hoop and just take this out. So now we're done with the hoop. Let's see, can I hang it up back here? I don't know if I got any more pegs. All right. So now we're done. We, we have this triangle. So we are going to use our rotary cutter to cut about a quarter of an inch from each of the lines and then also a quarter of an inch from this, this line here. I can kind of see it through my white fabric. And I use this acrylic ruler and it's nice because they have the lines this way and so I know this first pink line would make it a quarter of an inch. So that is done. here for now. Let's see. Oh, I know that the tops of this. Okay. So I have to line that up. The first ones I did, I cut them way up here, but then when you went to go put them in the bias tape, I had to trim them down. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one right. Okay. So the last thing you want to do is cut this. I did have a little bit of trouble. The first one I did, I had a little bit of trouble of uh, turning it inside out. So I kind of, you want to get that point a little bit close to the, you know, without, without s snipping your thread. So just get that point trimmed down so that when you turn it, 
it won't, um, it'll turn a little easier. Okay, I put the safety on. <laughs> I won't cut myself again. <laughs> All right, so now we are going to, and you know what I used last night when I did this? Ah, can't get through. I use my screw. I got my tool kit right next to me for my Ricoma. I used my screwdriver to get it through. That worked well. Okay, so turning it and I'm just trying to I try to do as much as I can just with my fingers getting until I get to where I can't push it no more and then I use the screwdriver. I'm going to get right there. So that's it. So now we have it turned right side out. I see a little blue thread I want to trim here. Okay. And now let me make a little bit of space. I'm going to press it just to press these um, seams so that it lies flat like my my other ones do. You see how I pressed those already? So let me get my little iron and my ironing board out. And it only takes a second to warm up. See y'all talking about uh, designs by Juju? <laughs> yes, they are awesome. And you can, yeah, you can buy a lot of things from there too. Uh oh, Loretta says, unfortunately, you and I now have matching left index fingers. <laughs> Stacy, are you the only one that loves glitter? <laughs> I love glitter. I have an issue when glitter does not come off of things that I want them to. <laughs> I remember when I made, the first tutu I made was for Elise when she turned one. And I made her the cutest little shirt and I wanted to have her a matching tutu. And it was, I did it pink and yellow. It was, um, Hello Sunshine was the theme for her first birthday. And so, uh, it was pink and yellow and it was beautiful but it, it wasn't until I got home and I started putting the tutu together that I realized there was glitter in the tool that I was using and it got everywhere <laughs> it's probably still on clothes that I was wearing that day all right so I think this is warm Oops. okay and so we are just pressing this down Making it nice and flat. All right, and I think that is good. Unplug my iron. Oh shit! I did the. Excuse me, I cursed. <laughs> I unplugged my camera. <laughs> Let me make sure my camera is going to come back on. Let's see. It's the camera for the machine. Yes. Okay. It came back on. <laughs> Sorry for cursing. <laughs> okay. I am, I have a problem with forgetting to unplug my iron. I'm going to leave it like this since it's on its silicone mat. And my craft room is notorious for the breaker going out when the iron is on and the machine, <laughs> embroidery machine is running. <laughs> okay. So now let's go back to the machine. And we are going to talk about the sewing features. So now we are ready to add the last piece of our bunting. 
to the bias tape and we're going to sew that. So I need to change my machine over to a sewing machine. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn it off. Okay, then this embroidery arm, it has, you can put your hand in, in this part and then lift up and then the whole embroidery arm will slide off. So I'm gonna do that and let me go put it on my table so I don't mess it up. Okay, all right, so now that is off and I'm gonna take, you could leave it like this, but I'm gonna put this on and now it's almost a sewing machine. Only other thing I have to do is change the foot. So right now it has the embroidery foot and I have this nice little case here with a bunch of presser feet in them, just all different types that it comes with. And it's super simple. I just have to loosen this screw. This embroidery foot just falls off. Like that. So now it's off. And let me just drop it in here. And there's two pieces. There's the foot holder. And then I'm just going to get the basic, I have a whole tray here of feet. So I'm getting the J foot. I like how nice and organized it all is. And then I can just put this down and the foot holder picks up the, um, the J foot. And I just put that on there. Now because this is not like a garment and this is just something that's going to be a wall hanging. I'm going to continue to use my embroidery thread, both the bobbin and the thread. So I'm going to change my blue thread out for white. I'm going to cut that. Pull, always pull your thread through the needle. Don't pull it backwards. And sorry, it's a little awkward the way the machine is, I gotta come over here. I don't have it like facing me, it's on an angle, so I have to come over here to get the thread going. <laughs> All right, so there's my thread. And I'm gonna run it through the thread path. And just follow the numbers. It's super simple, and I'm just gonna run it I got it hooked on something. Okay, there we go. Run it through and then I'm gonna cut it. And then after I turn it on, I'm gonna thread it. So now I close this and turn it back on. Oh, where is it at? Okay. Da -da -da. I get my pretty screen. And now I have a whole new screen because it senses that the embroidery arm is not on it anymore. And now it is ready for all of the sewing functions. So now I can thread it. So I have the, the thread going through the thread path, but I just push this lever down and now the needle is threaded. And I am going to lift the presser foot and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the stitches. So I am very basic when it comes to my sewing knowledge, right? I know I'm supposed to backstitch <laughs> and that's about it in a straight line and a backstitch. That's, that's all I know. So with my old uh, just regular sewing machine, there's just little things like, you know, raising the foot, um, putting my needle down, back stitching, and then when I'm done, I have to raise the needle, I have to raise the presser foot, and I have to pull and trim my thread. With this machine, you can program it to do all that for you. So I'm going to, by pressing these buttons right here, I'm gonna program it for the presser foot, 
going up when I'm done. It does a back stitch um, and it cuts the thread. So you'll see how that works once, once we start going. But before we start, I do need to make sure I have everything in order because we are ready to sew now. The machine is ready to go. So I clipped my triangles already and I made them one inch apart. So now I need to measure and clip my fourth, my new addition, where it is one inch from the other one. And you could just eyeball it too. So I'm just putting it, let's see if I can show you. So, and you also may be like me and not too long ago, I didn't know what bias tape was. So let me tell you quickly what bias tape is. All it is, it can, you can use any material you want. You can also buy bias tape at Joann's and, and um, even Walmart, they sell it. And what I've done is I've made double fold bias tape. And so I took a piece of fabric, what were you, like two inches wide? And I folded each edge in to where they met in the middle. So let's see if I'm doing a good job showing you all this. I know my camera doesn't focus very well. Okay. I'm trying to be where you can it's focusing on the machine. Let me change it to the other camera so then you can see better. All right, then we don't have to worry about focusing. Okay, I started with a piece of fabric that was about two inches wide, and then I folded this in and I folded this in, and I ironed it. Then I folded it in one more time and I ironed that. And so now we're left with what's called double fold bias tape. And we're going to open it halfway, put our pennant triangle in it, and then fold it down. And we are going to top stitch right along this so that it is now stitching it all together. So we're just going to do a straight line, which is, that's my kind of sewing. I'm going to do a straight line <laughs> right across, you know, a smidge above the edge of this bias tape. And that's going to give us a nice finished look on both sides. So that's the purpose of this. Now, you can buy bias tape. I did not have any white at home. I had some pink, I think, that I had bought before. So, but a while back... Somebody told me about this kit you can buy, and it came with four tools that look like this. This is the biggest one, and the rest are smaller. And this is a bias tape maker. And what I did last night was I cut a long strip of white material, and then at the end of this strip, I cut it at a 45 degree angle. And then you stick was it? I think it was the 45 degree angle. I put, I push that in. Let's see if it's going to come out the way it's supposed to. And there's a piece that you could stick in there, almost like a. You could just use a pin and kind of pulls it through. You see that slit? And then you pull it out the end, and you see how it folds it for you. Now it's not folding it the way I had it folded, but I would pull that out and I'd have my iron and then I would pull it out and iron it and it would make that, this part right here. So when you pull it out, it looks like this and I would iron it as it came out. And then as after I had a long strip that looked like this, I then folded it and you can even use some pins and pin it to your, your ironing board to hold it in place and then go and iron it in half like this. So that is your lesson on bias tape. <laughs> so let me clip my last piece. So I want it about right there, about an inch away. And done. 
And I think the only other thing I'm supposed to do is the end. I think I'm supposed to cut the end so that it's flat, like that. And if you don't want a raw edge, you can, what was it? I saw an example of it. Let me see. I don't think I did it right. They have it, they have an example of it in the instructions for this design, for your, your bunting. It shows you at the end of the, the PDF about making the bias tape. I don't know how they did that. Fold the ends of the bias tape like this and pin it in place and it shows, oh, I think you're going to fold it and make a little, I don't know if this is hot anymore, like this, a little triangle, and then down. So now you kind of have a finished edge on the end of this. Well, mine doesn't look that finished, but we can pinch it. And I'm going to do my other end too. It's not going to look that good. <laughs> okay, so now we have everything pinned, well not pinned, but clipped, and I'm going to bring this to the sewing machine and we're going to start at one end and we're just going to stitch as close as we can to that bottom there. I'm not good with measurements, I think maybe an eighth of an inch, like close. We're going to stitch close and then we're just going to go down the whole thing. So I apologize in advance, I don't know how well the camera is going to work with y'all watching me, so I might have to move it so that my arm and stuff is not in your way. Okay. And I'm going to go from this direction. And let me bring y'all in. Sorry, my tripod does not go taller. So I can't get y'all an up angle. But there you somewhat have the sewing machine. Or it's gonna put it's gonna focus on the doorknob in the back instead of the sewing machine. <laughs> Come on. Alright, there we go. So I'm gonna take my clip and I'm gonna put I gotta find like where is a good place. So I have this clear guard and then there's a metal section. I think if I keep the line of the bias tape going with that clear guard, that's gonna be like my my placement of where I want it so that my, my line, my stitch line actually stays straight. I have my foot pedal, so if you see, I don't think you saw, you might've saw it earlier, I had a cord going in front of the sewing machine. And that is the foot pedal. So I have that underneath my craft table here. And I am going to see if I could do this standing up. And so I just lowered the presser foot. Now with the, the program that I did earlier, it's going to, when I start pressing the foot pedal, it's going to automatically do a back stitch for me. So I don't even have to go and press the back stitch button. I have it programmed that it's going to do it for me. So I'm going to do that now. So now it, let's see, I don't think I have it in there. Oh, needle up. The feed dogs are not, I don't think I have it in there enough that the feed dogs are grabbing it. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, I forgot to put the feed dogs up. That's what it is. I was supposed to show you that. 
Okay, press your foot up, needle up, pull it out. Forgot that part. I'm gonna pull this out. Right behind here, there is a switch. So when I switch it over to sewing, I'm supposed to press that, like push it over this way. And now the feed dogs will come up. And then when you put the embroidery unit back on, you wanna switch it to where the feed dogs are down. And so that won't be on there. Okay, now we got it. Let's try that again. Okay, this should work now. Now it's moving. Okay. So I'm just using the edge of the foot as a guide. Now we're getting close to, oh, the presser foot comes up too when I, um, I'm not doing a great job. <laughs> the presser foot comes up when I let go of the pedal. All right, so here we go. Okay, so now we're getting to the first. And there's a little bit of bulk, but it's going right through. supposed to backstitch. <laughs> I went too far. And now it's going to cut and lift and I could just pull it out. So, yay! That came out good. Let me show y'all. Okay, hi! That was pretty good for like sewing sideways. <laughs> <laughs> and I have, I have the presser, the, the foot pedal down below, like on a cardboard box because the cord wasn't long enough to, because I have my machine going diagonal, but I still did it. So that is it, guys. How cute did that come out? I don't have the best top stitch, but it's, it's, it's not half bad. It's actually not bad at all. Yeah. I like it. Yay. I get proud of myself when I do new things. <laughs> If y'all haven't noticed, I'm like, ooh, I can do something. Yay. So this was fun, guys. And I love that sewing machine. Like, I'm gonna, I need to start sewing more things. Carol, I need you to teach me how to sew things. So we are all done, guys. Tell me what you think. Awesome. Yay. I'm glad y'all like it. I think it's super cute, super cute, and it's a cute little one, but you can make this as long as you want, and you can make it bigger too if you have the 6x10 hoop. So these are the 5x7, but I think they're still a very cute size. All right, C wants to know why the black knob on the J foot. Carly, I believe that it locks the foot level. Yes, that black knob, it can... You can push it in. I haven't figured out how to make it stay though. I know I could push it in and then it keeps the, the foot from wobbling. But I want mine to wobble because I had thicker pieces, right? If I think if I if that's right. <laughs> All right. So yay, I'm glad y'all liked it. This was a fun project. I'm glad we did this one. The other sweet pea project 
is a flag or a, a wall hanging. It could be a table runner. Just depends on how you put it together. But it has, I want to say it has eight or six blocks. So it's like a quilt where you would, each block would be one hooping in the embroidery machine. And then you sew it all together, like, a, like piecing a quilt. And then you um, put some binding around it. And you can either make it a flag or a wall hanging or a table runner. So that's something that I want to do, but that's going to be a much longer project <laughs> to put together. So, um, and if you were, if you're on my email newsletter, I put that one as the design I'm digging this week. So you can check, they have the link for it in there so you could check it out. All right. So, okay, I'm ready for, it's time for a sip. And I can only have like one or two sips though, because I have to go <laughs> drive my car. So, no more sips until I, yeah, no more sips. <laughs> um, so, tell me what questions y'all have. I know I probably, I missed all the chat the whole time. I'm sorry. Uh, just to give you a heads up, the next sip and stitch is on Friday, July 9th. And that is going to be a sip and chat. So then I could sit down and you could ask me all your questions about anything you want. And then I can, I can talk to you <laughs> because I feel bad while I'm doing the project. I, pr I probably miss a lot of the chat. So next Friday is going to be a sip and chat. I mean, the next two Fridays from now, July 9th. All right. Thank you, Tina. Okay, C. Lombard, you set the black knob when before you go over layers, it helps the foot level so that there's a slim chance of breaking a needle. Okay, thank you. I'm learning new things. All right. Thanks, Khan. She knows I'm going to that seafood fest. There has not been a seafood fest since before Katrina here uh, in New Orleans. And I, I live south of New Orleans. So when I was growing up, they had a seafood festival every summer and it was like the best thing ever and you know when I was a, a kid and a teenager it was so much fun and then it hasn't happened since Katrina so this is the first year since 2005 that we're having the seafood fest and I'm very excited about it <laughs> okay Susan wants to know why do I use a thread stand all the time I prefer a thread stand because I do not like the way the built-in thread holder on the flatbed machines is horizontal. Not My thread doesn't always feed off of it nicely like it is supposed to. And that can cause tension problems with your project. Um, it can cause uh, thread breaks um, and needle breaks if it, it, things get caught up and it's not coming off smoothly. So the thread stand, I like that upright angle of the, the thread coming off the spool and then it it has a, um, a loop that the thread passes through and then it goes in through to the thread path of the machine. And I just find it flows a lot more smoothly. All right. Thank you, Carol said the same thing. <laughs> All right. Yay, Rhonda. So who, who fell victim to Prime Day? <laughs> I know a lot of us did. <laughs> Um, Prime Day was was fun. They had some good things. I found I couldn't find any machines, embroidery machines, on sale for Prime Day. The Cricut was on sale for Prime Day, though. That was a really good deal. Um, I could not find any machines or like big things that I wanted, but there was lots of good supplies. There lots of stabilizer, lots of thread kits, um, and last year for Prime Day, I loaded up on a lot of those things. Um, all the variegated thread, all the pretty thread that I did not had before, those are on sale for Prime Day. And um, what else? Like tools for in the hoop projects, the, um, the snaps, the eyelets, the press, like all kinds of good stuff was on sale. All right, Diana, she has more helpful tips than anyone I know. Aww. Let's see. Next sip and stitch will be sip and chat Friday, July 9th at 7 p.m. Central. Thank you, Con. Yes, and get your questions ready. So, yay, Jenny got her Cricut. Um, if you need, if you, Jenny, if you need help with your Cricut, my friend Lori, she is an expert at the Cricut, and she has a blog, 
and she also has classes that she teaches um, where she teaches you how to create your own SVG files. She can she has um, like a really nice uh, like a PDF booklet on how to use Cricut Design Space, all that stuff. Check her out. Her blog is craftroomtime.com. So if you ever need Cricut help, go check her out. Okay, okay. Oh, I hear it's raining. <laughs> Maybe I won't be going to the Seafood Fest. <laughs> I just heard it started pouring. It's an outdoor festival. <laughs> Maybe I won't be heading down there after all. So let's just, no, let's just keep chatting. <laughs> Oh man, I have to call my husband. I hope he's not getting soaking wet. Let's see. All right, yep, Brenda's telling me raise my feed dogs. She knew what, what was wrong. Um, okay, so I think that's it. Let's see, what about, Susan said, what about the scan and cut? I did not see any sales on the scan and cut. Um, I know Sewing Machines Plus, I think, had a deal on the scan and cut for Hoop Fest. And he did say yesterday that he was honoring all the Hoop Fest prices this week. So go look at SewingMachinesPlus.com and see if they have a deal. I think most of the deals, though, for, um, for Hoop Fest were, you had to call in, though. So you have to watch the replay and see whether, when they were talking about the scan and cut and see if they had any deals on it, because I don't remember. All right. Carol says the best time to fish is when it rains. Yeah. Hey, Angela Jasmine is here. How you doing, girl? That's my favorite YouTuber, guys. <laughs> so, let's see. Um, Angela was on Hoop Fest last week, so that was really cool to see her on there. She was telling us all about her milk goose, big fancy machines. So. All right, is there any more questions, guys? So, I really, this was a fun project. Made a cute little banner. There's so many ways that you can make this different. Now, this is geared towards, you know, you could put this out for uh, Memorial Day weekend, 4th of July, um, Veterans Day, but I'm sure they have other bunting patterns to where you can make them fun for all kinds of occasions or just to have out like just to be cute during the summertime or for Christmas, I'm sure they have some. So, all right. Yeah, it is pouring outside right now. I do not think I'm gonna be going to any festival tonight. <laughs> no festival. Nope, might as well just stay here and hang out. <laughs> all right. No, Carol, I don't think I'm going to the festival. Oh, Angela says that's good for a first first birthday high chair banner. Yes, that is cute. They make those where um, you can have each triangle have O-N-E so that it spells one. So that would be super cute for birthday parties. Thank you, Carol. So, let's see. Con sip and tip t-shirt when can we get the design I started making that post so for those of you who watched a few weeks ago we did an introduction to sublimation and I made this shirt and I have the design and I have it as a free download um, I was gonna I have it as a PNG is anyone interested in having a SVG as well if you if you don't have sublimation and you do have the electronic cutting machines um, I'll put the SVG in there too. So I started writing the post and I made it to where you can download it for free, but I haven't published it yet. I'll probably get to that Monday or Tuesday next week. But when I do, I will put it in the email newsletter and I will post it in the Facebook group so that if you have a printer at home or a cutting machine, you can make yourself a shirt. So that's gonna be fun. I'm still looking for a supplier for good quality shirts that have high polyester count so that I could put them for sale on my website too for those of you that don't have the printer or a cutting machine and and want to get a shirt um, but they're like all the places that sell shirts they're all sold out because sublimation has turned into a huge thing and people sell them like hotcakes so um, I once I find a good supplier that I can get you know a variety of sizes 
I will put these for sale on the website and then I'm still figuring out my cups. But once I have the cups figured out, then I will put these for sale on the website too. Yeah, so lots of people would like the SVG. Great. Okay. All right, guys. Well, even though it does not look like I'm going to the festival now, I'm going to go ahead and go and call my husband and make sure that he might I might need to go pick him up <laughs> in the rain. So, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I will be back two Fridays from now on Saturday, July 9th. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to have a sip and chat where you can ask me any of your questions about embroidery, sublimation, vinyl, not so much sewing. Sewing is not my, my forte yet, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get there. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope you all have a great weekend. Have a happy and safe 4th of July since I won't talk to you.